Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I want to show you different methods how you can create XML files in Power Automate. I will also explain the difference in performance, especially if you want to convert large amount of data like arrays into XML. If you're not familiar with XML, it stands for Extensible Markup Language and it's a text-based format that is mostly used to exchange data between two systems in a structured format. If you need more information about that, I will put some links into the description of this video. Without further ado, let's go to Power Automate and start to create the flow. First, I will create a string variable and call it XML output. Next, I have an array variable with a lot of roots, and this array should be converted to an XML format. Now let's start with the first method and I will create a scope action for that to keep the difference methods organized. With the scope action, you can group many different actions into one scope. You don't have to do it, it's just now for educational purposes and it just helps to keep the whole flow a bit more organized. The first action in scope will be a set variable where I will enter the XML prolog where it will define the used XML version and the encoding type. The XML prolog is optional, but it is recommended to use. Then I will add an append to string variable action and add the tag roots. An XML file always needs a root element, and in this case, fruits will be my root element. I will add an apply to each action and add the array fruits. In there, I will add another append to string variable action. I will add the tag fruit, then the tag name, and in there is the value of the current item. In that case, it's the property name. Then another tag for color. And the final will be origin. And I'll have to close the tag. That's very important. Every tag in XML needs to have also a closing tag, tag at the end. Now the apply to each action will go through each item in the array and add each item to the XML output variable. After the apply to each action, I'll have to add another append to string variable action to close the root tag.
And after that, I would just add a compose to see the final result. Now let's test it and see how long it takes. So that took about 20 seconds, which is quite long because I'm not dealing with so much data here. How could I speed this up? One way would be to go to the settings of this apply to each action and turn on the concurrency control. Let's go there. I click here on the action and then I go to settings, turn on concurrency control. And here's the degree of parallelism. So if it's set at 20, it can handle 20 items at the same time. I can max this out to 50 items uh, at the same time. Let's see how it's performing now. Well, it was a bit faster now, around 13 seconds, 14 seconds. It is faster, but still, we're not dealing with so much data here, just 95 items. And if you think you have very large arrays with 5,000, 10,000 items, then this can take a very long time. And you also have to think about all the actions that are executed. If you have an array with 5,000 items, then there will be 5,000 actions executed. And depending on your license model and how often this flow would run per day, you could already get into trouble with your maximum action executions per day. That's why I'll show you now the second method to create an XML file, which is way faster and can handle more data. And the best thing is you don't need to go to Hogwarts to learn this magic. So let's rename this one here, the first method. Let's create a second scope. Second method. First, I will reset my XML output file. I'll use the set variable, XML output, and simply reset it. So now it has the same value like at the beginning. Now the second action is a compose action. And in here, I will create the basis for my XML output. I will start with two curly brackets. Enter here, roots. And then again, two curly brackets. Then just root. And now after fruit, and after fruit, I will simply add my array. This might look confusing, but it will all make sense in a few seconds. So fruits will be again, my XML root object. And fruit will be each single fruit uh, from this array. And there is a function in Power Automate that can create an XML output from objects. And that's why we need to compose it in that way. So I will add again an append to string variable. and simply use here the function XML. And use the output of my previous compose action. And at the end, I will just make another compose to display the output. Let's test it. As you can see, the previous method again needed about 14 seconds. And now the second method only needed 0.1 second to do the same. And I will show it to you. If we look here at the output, it generated the exact same data 
in the exact same format that I want it to have. And not only is it faster, but it only actually needs two actions, whereas the other one loops multiple times through the data and causes a lot of action executions. And you can use this with 100 items in an array, with thousands, with 10,000s. Of course, with 10,000s, it will need a bit more than 0.1 second, but it's still a lot faster than using an apply to each action. Now, there is a third method to create XML files when you need to have a very special structure. I'll add another scope for this. And I will reset my XML output variable again. And now I'll use a compose action just to show you what I mean with a bit more uh, complicated XML structure. Let's say your XML should look like this. So as you can see, the name and the color are now not separate tags, but they're attributes of the tag root, and only the tag origin is separate. You cannot use the previous method to generate the output like this. If you want this, you'll need a select action in between, and I will show you how. So let's go here to select. from our fruits array. I will use this icon here on the right side to switch to text mode. And I'll need the concat function here. With the concat function, you can combine different strings to one single string. And I want to create one single string for each item in that array. I'll open the first with two single quotes. I'll start with root space name. So now comes the second string. In that case, it's going to be the current item and the property name of it. Now the second string. Double brackets closed, color, double brackets. Now it's the value of the second property. So now it closes the tag. Now we start the tag for the origin. Close it. Now it's the value of the origin, the origin, yes. And we close the origin tag and we close the fruit tag. So this select action will create another array and I will need to convert these array items to a text to append it to the XML output. I will use again the append string variable action. XML output. Now I want to add roots. That will be again my root element. Now we use the join action. The 
the join action will be the output from my previous select. I'll need a second parameter as the delimiter, but I don't really need a delimiter, so this can be just empty. I use add here and here and the fruits tag. And final again, a compose action to show the output. And let's test it again. And here's the third output with the more complicated XML structure. You can see that the values are now as attributes in the tags of the fruit. The origin is separately and it just adds it very quickly. This was also just 0 0.2 seconds in total. It's very fast, very efficient, and it doesn't re require a lot of actions. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you found this useful for your own project. I'm always happy for some new likes and subscribes. If you have any suggestions, just leave a comment. And with that, all that is left to say, have a great day.